There are many changes in menopause that can affect the functioning of the liver and contribute to the development of liver disease. I'm your host, Jennifer Harrington, and today on Menopause Natural Solutions, we are talking about the importance of good liver function in menopause. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause and menopause related. Stay tuned as naturopath Jennifer Harrington explains how to use natural therapies to transform your health and happiness. Welcome back, ladies, and a big hello to all my Turkish listeners. During the week, I received a notification to say that this podcast had reached the number one position on the Turkish Alternative Health Chart. Wow. Just wow. A massive thank you to to everyone who helped make this happen. And please help me keep this momentum going. The more women I can reach and potentially help during this difficult transition, the better. You can help me do this by leaving a five-star rating, writing a review, and sharing the podcast with your friends. Now on to today's topic of liver health. Chronic liver disease is currently the 12th leading cause of death worldwide. For menopausal women, their risk of developing liver disease is increased as our estrogen levels reduce. With the reduction of estrogen comes changes within the liver itself. Data has shown an approximate reduction in function at 1% a year starting in perimenopause. Findings include the reduction in liver blood flow and volume, overall liver function, and a reduced ability for the liver to regenerate. In menopause, the main form of estrogen changes from estradiol, which is produced in the ovaries, to estrone, which is produced in the adipose tissue and the liver itself. We need the liver to produce estrogen now, but we also need estrogen for the proper functioning of the liver. So it's a little bit of a catch-22 there, and hence this is potentially a time of increased issues within the liver itself. Symptoms your liver isn't coping well include headaches, itchy skin, pain in the upper right quadrant, which is actually in the lower part of your ribs, fatigue, weakness, nausea, easy bruising, swollen ankles, brain fog, skin pigmentation, insomnia, weight gain, constipation, and more. And a lot of you will probably say, hold on, they're the same symptoms I'm actually experiencing with menopause. So what is it? Is it the reduction in estrogen or is it the reduction in the liver's ability to cope, to function? I feel it is really important to have an annual liver function test. That way you can see what's really going on. And for more information on testing and on optimal results and also treatment if there's any abnormal results, please consider joining my online retreat. The online retreat is my membership program It's sort of set up to to mimic an in-person health retreat, but from the comfort of your own home. And there is education around menopause, on optimal healthing, and on graceful aging. It really is for women who are struggling with their menopausal transition. And it can be different for every woman, but you may be experiencing hot flushes, mood swings, fatigue dryness, uh, or any other menopausal symptoms really. And the retreat is more to to talk to you and teach you about what testing is appropriate, 
what foods you should be eating, whether you should be considering any vitamins, minerals or supplementation and looking at your lifestyle and your environment. So if the retreat sounds like something that interests you, please head on over to the website and uh, uh, check it out. The average woman is exposed to hundreds of chemicals every day, all of which her liver needs to process. A few easy changes like eating organic foods or changing your personal care products allows the liver more breathing room. Less chemicals in, the less work the liver must do to remove them. Giving the liver breathing room allows it to go back and start processing the chemicals that it has put into storage as it was too busy to process them before. The body can store chemicals almost anywhere. The liver prioritizes getting toxins out of the bloodstream to prevent it getting to vital organs and potentially causing death. However, they can still wreak havoc in storage. Uh, An example is your lead or lead levels like to be stored in your bones. And in your bones, it displaces calcium and makes your bones brittle. So although we don't want lead in the blood, we don't want it in our bones either. So by giving the liver some breathing room can help to start detoxifying any toxic substances you have. But before you start any um, intensive detoxification regime, I always recommend that you do some testing to discover what you actually have stored. And the two tests I really like to do are HTMA, which is a hair tissue mineral analysis, which has a look at toxic metals. And I also like to do a GPL tox test, which is a urine test that has a look at toxic stored chemicals. And guys, we we all live in the same world. And unfortunately, it is a toxic world that we live in. I'm sure we're all storing something or other. It's just a good idea to find out what particular substances you as an individual are storing so that you can individualize a detoxification program to, to get them out. When we're looking at liver function, there are certain foods that we know can help to optimize it. And I'm just going to run you through a list of these foods. So hopefully you've got plenty of them in your diet. And you'll probably notice some of these foods can also be bought as supplements. So with abnormal results, this is something that I would consider whether the food itself is strong enough or whether a concentrated supplement might be more ideal. So globe artichoke. Is, is definitely an example of this. We can have that as a food or we can have that as a supplement. Uh, cruciferous vegetables, especially broccoli and broccoli sprouts. Certain spices, especially turmeric, uh, but also things like garlic and ginger. Certain fruits, in particular citrus fruits, especially lemons. So even having like a a freshly uh, squeezed lemon in water is is really good for liver function. Beetroot. Um, Protein is vitally important for optimal liver function and maintenance. And protein can be in the form of, you know, nuts, fish, eggs, chicken, meat, protein powder. Leafy greens. Now, the particular ones for liver function are dandelion, coriander, and spinach. But really, any dark green, leafy greens are going to be beneficial. Uh, From fruits, I can't believe I forgot to mention blueberries. Blueberries are amazing. They are a superfood in themselves. Also, things like avocado, spirulina, apple cider vinegar, And guys, water. Your liver can't function if it's dehydrated. So make sure you drink up. But while you're having your water, consider making it a herbal tea. And these herbal teas will will also be of benefit. Milk thistle, dandelion and green tea. And we, we can't talk about liver without talking about certain lifestyle practices that 
can help assist in its functioning. And really, guys, anything that stimulates lymphatic movement and lymphatic drainage is also going to help to encourage detoxification. So things like dry skin brushing, especially, or actually with dry skin brushing, you're always moving towards the heart. Um, Any movement, walking, rebounding, swimming, these all help with lymphatic movement. But yoga is the specific um, form of exercise that can really help with detoxification and liver strengthening. Can't go past acupuncture or massage. I put my hand up for both of those. I love getting a good massage. Stretching is is another way to, to help or even a, an Epsom salt bath. And I've saved the best for last and that is an infrared sauna. There is nothing like a good old infrared sauna to sweat it on out and detoxify. Obviously, there's a word of warning here with with hot flushes. The whole point of an infrared sauna is to actually heat yourself up and to sweat the toxins out. Don't forget to do something cold afterwards, a cold shower or even an ice down. Well, guys, this is really a, a very, very short and sweet episode today. I really wanted to touch base and let you know how important optimal liver function is not just with the menopausal transition, but with aging as well. And there certainly is lots of things we can change with our diet and with our lifestyle because luckily our liver is amazingly resilient and in most cases is capable of regeneration. So if you haven't had a liver function test this year, go and get one. The sooner you find issues, the sooner you can start treatment and the less regeneration the liver has to try and achieve. All right, guys, that's it for me this week. As always, I love your company and I can't wait to hear from you. Bye. listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and is not intended to replace medical advice.